Let's unpause this music. Uh, un <laughs> we'll actually pause the music and unpause the game. That's what I meant to say. All right, then, guys. Welcome to the fifth and final point in this uh, five-point set between OCC and ZZ. The score is currently 3-1 to ZZ, and they played really, really well uh, this set of games, but I was so happy to see OCC get a win and get a point on the board. Um, I like to see the underdog get at least one game, and that happened, so I'm happy, and now we'll get the best of three going in the deathmatch for the fifth and final point in this series of games. So down to the south of the map in the purple, we've got Aphrodita. He's playing as the Japanese. And uh, his teammate is uh, over to the right of the map, Christ, in the blue, playing as the Persians. Christ, a very well-known, um, I believe he's Canadian, um, deathmatch player. And he's playing in the Persians there for the uh, the ZZ team, bringing in a new player here. Uh, over to the west of the map in the red, we've got Hey Come On. He's playing as the Persians as well. And up to the north, we've got oh, no. No Zuo Nodi for OCC playing as the Japanese. It's that Japanese Persian mirror that we've become pretty familiar with and we get to see it once more because uh, we get to see it every time we watch the group stage and uh, the deathmatch section of the group stage. Unless the players get it wrong for some reason, but that just doesn't usually happen. And so, yeah, obviously we kind of know what to expect from the Persian players. We're expecting the fast camels and paladins and then switching into elephants Nellies and uh, into heavy scorpions. The uh, Japanese players were expecting the heavy scorpions and maybe some onagers to counter the um, counter the heavy scorpions of the other player. And then for the uh, for the uh, Japanese, we're kind of expecting to see mass halberdier as well. Maybe some uh, Maybe some samurai coming into the mix later on. But really, the Persians do have the dominance against the Japanese. And in the late game, um, that definitely seems to be the case anyway. So, um, Christ here, going to try and send these uh, paladins over to see if he can kill any villagers or something like that. Try and maybe get some scouting info, delay some TCs. He's probably going to run into this town center from Hey Come On, actually, and might just get a villager kill there. And doing that kind of stuff is really important in deathmatch. It just slows your opponent's eco down quite a lot. Uh, but there you go, the first elephant out on the map for Christ there. And uh, over on this left side, Hey Come On, mass scorpions, but those uh, halberdier able to close the gap in time and it looks like Aphrodite is gonna slow down or deny this castle anyway as well which is really good for him that castle was in a great location but that is gonna be denied meanwhile yeah those knights uh, those paladins sorry coming in at the back stopping that TC production and it's amazing just what you can do with just a couple of knights obviously that's gonna really impact hey come on Zico and if you have a quick look at his pop he's uh, losing those military sorry Eco units pretty quickly. Hakeman's army just does not seem to be here though. Um, he made a few spears, but he's got nothing here at the moment. Um, I'm actually wondering where the hell he's gone. Like, where where are his halves? Why are they not being queued up? Um, his his barracks are completely idle. That's not good. On the, this right side, his his castles are queuing the elephants. That's great. But Aphrodite's got a huge advantage now as he pushes forwards with these halves and has about three times the military size. On this right side, um, Christ, the Persian player, expected to have a lower population now, but obviously those elephants, even though they only take up one population, they're probably worth about four, given the fact that they are just so strong. But on this left side, hey, come on, just really seems to be falling flat on his face. And these trebs from Aphrodite are gonna deploy. And I feel like he made a, a really big mistake with not making enough early game units. He didn't really make any halves. He didn't make any early paladins. He just went straight for the elephants. And that just is not the way to win this. Um, sheer volume of units is, is usually the way to go. So that castle is going to fall. And with that, uh, the elephants will be refunded. But this eco back here, slow to get rolling because of the raiding from Christ, which has been pretty effective. And Christ sending a few more units over there as well to help out. He knows on this top side with his elephants, he can hold out for a while. He's got siege hams in there. He's got heavy scorpions in there. And obviously, that's going to be a pretty big siege fight. Siege, ironically, or funnily enough, I guess it's not really irony, but uh, Siege kind of counters Siege pretty well in most situations, but the Rams here from Christ are going to be perfection for dealing with these heavy Scorpions. If only he tasks them to fight them. Those uh, 
There's elite war elephants making immense meat of the halbs though. I mean, did you see that? Those halbs, there were so many of them and then suddenly they were gone. Um, Christ now getting that population lead and that's what he needs. He's just one-shotting these scorpions as he runs up to them and tusks them as they run away. Um, but yeah, obviously he'll advantage here for Aphrodite, keeping his heavy scorpions safe behind the halbs and that is how it's done. Mass, mass um, heavy scorpion shots just wrecking absolutely wrecking those elephants and that is how it is done look at that that was almost perfection there meanwhile those are a really loose formation the uh, elephants able to get in there and cause a lot of trouble with the um the scorpions and that's the biggest thing the elephants do splash damage so if the if you've got a group of scorpions on top of each other like they usually are as soon as one elephant gets in and starts tusking away it's gonna kill all of the scorpions in that immediate area. Christ now got a good amount of momentum. I'm surprised he's not sending the rest of his elephants forward. There we go. And he's gonna keep moving forwards with those rams. It's gonna be very tough for Nozo and Odie to stop that. Uh, meanwhile, those elephants on this left side here getting butchered by the heavy scorpions. And yeah, they're killing off a lot of these halberdier and a lot of these samurai as well. But honestly, from behind, these heavy scorpions laying down the damage. And suddenly, those war elephants really don't look so potent and don't look so menacing after all they're just cute dumbos really but yeah uh, Aphrodite really showing us what's up here and honestly this deathmatch is uh, really well executed from the ZZ team and Juan I I'm I'm really impressed by his DM play. Uh, this is fantastic to see from ZZ. And actually, if this team goes against, you know, one of the Tyrant Deathmatch teams, we're going to be in for a real treat because they've obviously got a lot of skill in the Deathmatch element. Just look at the Scorpions. Okay, okay. Now the Elephants are getting close. you got to be very careful when they get close, but it's not going to happen. It's over. Hey, come on. Nozo and Odi, they know when it's up, and they've resigned right away there as Aphrodite and Christ together had a combined population of 378, which is pretty damn good. Uh, very close to 400 pop in total. Whereas, hey, come on. And Nozo Onodi, at the end of the game, had 128 population between them. Simply not good enough, unfortunately. But hey, there you go. Game number one, and we'll load up game number two straight away with... Uh, ZZ getting that first point on the board. So, game number two, and this time we've got the Huns, and we've got the Aztecs, the Hun Aztec uh, Mirror Civ, down to the south of the map in the purple, we've got Aphrodita, he's playing as the Huns, and over to the right of the map in the blue, we've got Christ in uh, playing as the Aztecs. Up to the north of the map, Nozo and Nodi in the orange, playing as the Huns, and over to the west of the map in the red, we've got Hey Come On, playing as the Aztecs. Now, that Elite Eagle Warrior is really strong in the early game. So it's really important to get out a fast paladin or something to counter it because it will kill your villagers so quickly. You know, the Elite Eagle Warrior is pretty damn good and uh, when up against a, 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 a hussar obviously it's gonna win easily. Case in point, the Elite Eagle wins and now Hakebon is safe, but uh, if that eagle gets in and does some early villager damage, it's pretty nasty. So you'll notice there that Nozo and Odi quickly adding in paladins as fast as he could to basically negate any damage from that eagle. It was the perfectly right thing to do, and uh, it certainly helped him keep those villagers safe. Now, obviously, he's splitting his villagers up to build more units. The Huns so fast in the early game and you'll probably see both of my uh, Aztec players playing a little bit more defensively as those paladins start to run in but that's the thing with the paladins uh, they get in there and they get into the woodwork they cause a lot of problems and they start to kill off those villagers and eight villagers for hey come on at the moment that's going to drop pretty quickly if Aphrodita uh, starts focusing them down at the moment, Aphrodite are just sending out a few groups of paladins here and there to try and do some eco-harassment. Just try and do a little bit of harassment. Of course, those Aztec pikemen with plus 8 attack damage, doing a lot of uh, damage to those... Uh, a lot of damage to those... Uh, Paladins there. This is kind of amusing though. Nozo and Odi, one paladin with a trail of elite eagles just chasing him down. Kind of uh, exciting. 
<laughs> bringing a few units over for Christ, I guess. But uh, yeah, Aphrodite here getting out some uh, heavy cavalry archers, and that's a pretty standard build. Heavy cavalry archers, paladins, um, halberdier, and rams. It's very potent, and against the Aztecs, it's probably pretty strong as well. The paladins really are the, the killer there for the Huns. They're just so good. Uh, with a bit of support fire from the heavy cavalry archers, it will prevent the um, Aztec player from being very effective with pikes. But this is nice because Aphrodite and Christ are both attacking uh, Nozo and Odi simultaneously. They're both sending all of their units over there. Whilst uh, Hey Come On kind of sitting back at home playing a little bit defensively, uh, being a little bit scared of the Hun rush, which is kind of expected. Uh, one thing though I guess I didn't take into consideration was the, was the Siege Onager from from the Aztecs. That's going to lay down a huge a uh, huge amount of damage if they manage to get the shots off, but so far not managing to do that. Honestly though, Juan is, he seems to be in a league of his own at the moment, getting into the back here, uh, taking out these military production buildings of Nozu and Nodi, and he's holding out on the front. He's doing a great job. Christ under a lot of pressure, but at the back, Aphrodite is just wrecking everything, which is so good to see, uh, obviously for, for those guys anyway. On the left side, he's still defending against the Aztecs pretty well. We got Mass Pikeman from Hey Come On against Mass Heavy Cavalry Archers here from uh, Aphrodite, it seems. But he's sending everything he's got over to this right side, just going for it. And uh, it's really hurting, hurting Nozo and Odi a lot. Uh, obviously, Nozo and Odi now, no real economy building up. He's got a few castles on the front, which is going to deter Aphrodite a little bit. But in a 2v1 situation, of course, he's going to be push pushed back. But this is opening up a route for Hey Come On to come in. But then again, Pikemen, what are they going to do? Uh, they're not going to do a lot unless they can fight the, the Paladins one-on-one -on -one without any support fire from any heavy cavalry archers or anything like that. So ZZ at the moment are looking fantastic. 2v1 on this right side against Nozo and Nodi, and not enough damage coming in from Hey Come On on the left. I mean, he's trying to make some pushes and stuff, but uh, Aphrodite at the back of the map just wrecking everything it seems and together on the front there's mass pikes from Christ with the support of the paladins and the heavy cavalry archers are able to start doing some good damage they're fighting the paladins one on one and that's what they want to do um, deploying those traps as well trying to stop these castles from going up of course that, those castles they will deal with the pikes once they get in range I mean four castles firing on your pikemen they aren't going to last for, a, for very long at all but yeah, back of the map, obviously, uh, Nozo and Odi trying to defend here with some uh, castle and stuff. But honestly, that's going to go down very quickly as well. Aphrodite is just doing so good so far. Uh, on this left side, though, I'm just waiting for some action from Hey, come on. It's difficult to push in, but he has got siege rams here. And it's mostly just heavy cavalry archers. So you may as well pull these units forward. Uh, use the siege rams to soak up that arrow fire and then come in with the siege onager. Get on the Siege Onager hype, it's about to happen. That shot landing on the hill and it missed. Well, that was rather anticlimactic. I was just, I, was, I thought we'd see a huge number of units just get flattened there, but obviously not. Uh, on this right side then, 92 military for Christ and 90 military for Aphrodite. 50 for Nozo and Odi and 64 for Hey Come On. They are massively outnumbered, but bear in mind most of these numbers from Christ are literally just pikemen now. Here we go. Big Onager shot. Not as big as I actually thought it would be. Yet again, I am disappointed. <laughs> Son, I am disappointed. Give us a better Onager shot, please. Aphrodite, though, of course, going to be defending a little bit more now. Obviously, he knows that uh, he can't be over on the right side of the map for the rest of the game. But to be honest with you, these two together with the siege rams coming in, with the trebs deploying. Once those castles are down, Nozo and Odi is going to have nothing left. He's trying to build this castle again. Finally, just getting it up. But uh, those units coming in, killing a few more villagers anyway. On the left, those uh, pikemen making mincemeat of uh, the paladins at the moment. And still, Aphrodite sending his units over to the right side. And I'm still amazed by this because Hey Come On is getting away with way too much. And Juan is letting his eco, uh, letting his base just fall to Hey Come On here. Uh, at the price, at the cost, I guess, of taking down uh, Nozu and Odi. And they are taking him down. Uh, they, are, they really are. Nozu and Odi here, no economy at all. Just 12 villagers on the map. It's simply not enough. And uh, he's going to run out of resources, run out of gold very fast here. These castles going down, and this wave of units just gonna just basically 
run it, run him over, I guess. No trade for these guys either. And at the south of the map, ZZ starting to trade nice and early as usual. But yeah, left side, obviously that is uh, starting to push forwards quite quickly. Hey, come on, looking pretty potent there. And he's got the hill. So... It's all well and good taking Nozo and Odi out, but if uh, Aphrodita loses his base to uh, Hey, come on, it's not like they're in a much better position either. But hey, the Paladins are here, and if they can just take down the Onagers, then that's going to be good. It's kind of bad army control by Hey, come on, actually. He should really be trying to keep those Onagers behind the Pikemen, not letting them get out in front like that, because that's costly. Of course, those um, Heavy Cavalry Archers going to make very short work of the Pikes, but then again, they are Aztec Pikes, and they will do tons of damage to the the uh, to the Paladins. A lot of Heavy Cavalry Archers going down to the Onagers as well. Aphrodite here getting flattened by that one, uh, losing it. A hell of a lot there. And hey, come on. Uh, looking really good. It's just a shame his teammate is uh, pretty dead right now. Um, Aphrodite bringing his army back, of course. Uh, he's done his work. And on the right, left side now, Christ bringing in the Elite Eagle Warriors as well to help push this back. And of course, Elite Eagles, they are the answer. They are exactly what he's been looking for. And oh my god. Hey, come on. Killing, like, half of his own army there. His uh, Siege Onager is going to get swiftly dealt with by the looks of things. But not after firing one last shot to land on those heavy cavalry archers there. But wow. He killed so many of his own units. What's that about? What is that about? But yeah, Nozo and Odi running off of an empty tank at the moment, really. He's got what he's got in the bank, and he's that's it. I mean, he's not going to be doing much more after that. Saying that, Aphrodite's not exactly got a lot of, uh, a lot of gold either. But he is still trading at the back of the map, so he's definitely got more gold income than Nozo and Odi. And uh, hey, come on at the moment. Christ sending a thousand gold in tribute. That's very friendly and a nice thing of him to do, I guess. And that means that Aphrodite Juan will be able to reboot his military production uh, with pure paladins at the moment. And of course, those eagles from Christ are going to clean up any pikemen very, very quickly. And hey, come on. I imagine going to be pretty low on gold. Well, actually, he's not. He's got 2,000. It's actually food and wood that he's going to start worrying about soon. But spamming those pikes... Not a good decision when you've got the eagles coming your way. But then again, he's not really going to have too much else that he can do. Aphrodite here on the right side. There's heavy cavalry archers just mowing down everything in their path, it would seem. But Nozo Winodi isn't out yet. He's rebuilding. He's keeping himself in the game. And I'm surprised, you know. I honestly thought ZZ would have made very, well, much faster work of Nozo Winodi on the right side. But you know what? Um, OCC... Never underestimate them. They have played really well this series of games, and I honestly did not expect such a great performance from them. Um, they're putting up a good fight here. They're holding on, and in fact, Nozo Anodi could just push this back. He's got a good amount of army here. He's got halbs on the left side, and he's got those paladins and those heavy cav on the right side as well. But uh, back here... Hey, come on, seems to be losing the uh, losing the momentum. He's down to nine military units. He's only got uh, eight left now, sorry. And 123 eco units, is it's a lot. But he's not got the military production that he needs. And on this right side, Aphrodite with 76 military. Christ with 45. And they are severely outnumbering Nozo Anodi now, who we know has pretty much no eco. He's rebuilt pretty quickly, though, I've got to say. 54 pop for him now on the eco. But 2v1 again on this right side. And Hey, come on, seems to be nowhere in sight. Making Jaguar Warriors and Siege Onagers. He's out of gold. He's out of food. And uh, the resources now are just going to start trickling in. But yeah, heavy cavalry archers here running through. Obviously, going to be uh, picking off a lot of these uh, uh, paladins and such. I mean, he's got a huge mass right there. And there's no siege onagers on this side. Not as the Huns. The Huns, uh, only mangonels for those guys, unfortunately. Imagine if they did have siege onagers. Just how OP they'd be then. Um, God. That's, that's kind of mad. Uh, obviously, they're here, though, Akamon just running out of steam, it seems. Aphrodite swiftly taking care of this siege, it would seem, as well. Uh, not going to let that do too much damage before it's uh, dealt with. But, yeah, those were already pushed right back once more. And I think the GG probably incoming very soon from OCC now. They can't fight this 2v1. And those were already down to 72 population, as Christ and Aphrodite are pretty much at the population limit right now. Both of them on 196 population. And uh, the uh, population limit has been reached by both. It's flashing yellow at the top of the screen. 
It's a huge uphill battle for OCC and one that at this point I simply don't think they can win. Their trade now being raided a little bit as well and that is pretty much end game right there as Christ runs through with his eagles and there's the GG from Nozo and Odi. Hey come on just resigning there as well and that makes it a 2-0 victory for ZZ meaning that they'll get that fifth and final point, making the overall score 4-1 to those guys. And, you know, they did play really nicely. Um, both teams were very entertaining to watch. And I've got to say, that's probably one of the best set of games I've seen in this tournament so far, simply because I know I know it wasn't, you know, a 3-2 victory. It was a 4-1. It was but just simply because the... the, the variety in the gameplay, the variety in the styles of play, the, the all-out outlandishness of OCC. Really fun team to watch and uh, unfortunately I don't think they're going to make it through the group stage or uh, OCC. ZZ of course probably going to make it through in the number one position but um, OCC have definitely been a good laugh and uh, we'll see what happens I guess. We'll see what happens. But there we go. That was a very